I think that guy needs help. He's dragging. I think that guy's in trouble. And me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be, you and me, we're family. Sing ho, hey, long for the ride, ho, hey, I'll stay by your side, ho, hey, you'll always be all right by me, yes, all right by me. So, in the last blog, we just returned from Beclay Tepe. And within hours of returning, a Meltemi was blowing through and the anchorage was in, in chaos. The first thing that happened was the anchor dragged and we ended up on the bowsprit of one of the Turkish gullets, which caused some damage to the rigging. Um, we didn't get any of that on camera, unfortunately, but uh, as you can imagine, we were very busy at the time. But as we settled down, we noticed other boats dragging as well and some of the boats were getting in real danger. Yeah, Woody's going over to the other boat. So they seem to have got the engine working now because um, they're coming back with the boat. Hey, Woody's back. Uh, um, that was um, Mehmet and his anchor was dragging. Oh, his name's Mehmet? Mehmet is a lovely guy, actually. He's an uh, ex-fighter um, pilot. He said, this this for your wife. Just because I like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he was so eternally grateful. So what happened is his anchor was dragging. Um, I went across to try and help him and I, I turned up and he's stark naked, yes. <laughs> so he's this big Turkish guy. He's, he's put some pants on now. <laughs> I said, do you need any help? He said, yes, yes, you come aboard, you come aboard. He was trying to pull the anchor up but he was dragging all the time and then he was trying to get his motor started but as he was getting his motor going, um, there was a line in the water and he got a prop wrap so then his engine completely stopped. So I tied that up quickly, then went and tried and cut the rope from the prop in the meantime, there was an Australian guy over here called Noah. Oh, Noah came over and then I said, can you just try and nudge the boat away while I go under and cut the rope? Nice. So I was under the, underneath the boat as the boat was dragging oh. with the other guy in the outboard trying to push the boat away from the other boats. I got enough off to get the motor started. But as we and did so, um, Noah seized his engine. There was like, like two disasters kind of just separating. And the, and the other guy came across to see if he could help. So then the other guy had to tow the Australian guy, Noah, back to his boat we because he was drifting downwind. Eventually we got Mehmet's anchor down and he held, but he still had a lot of rope around his prop even though it was working. So I went down and I was, was hacking away and hacking away and uh, and then Noah replaced his engine and came back and Mehmet by this time was like, you come and drink whiskey on my boat. <laughs> so he got this warm bottle of whiskey out. They're both like big white haired bearded, big bushy bearded yeah. guys. And it's like, if you ever, if anybody can remember ZZ Top, there was like the two really bearded guys, and then there was one guy who was the drummer, I think, who was got his head, like, had no hair at all. And afterwards, he said, can you go and check again? I said, well, if you turn the motor forward and backwards, and if there's any rope left there, then it'll free it up. So he did. And by this time, I had about three whiskeys, so I dived back down. I just kind of wheedled the knife in there and started pulling it out, and I realized there was loads more. So I kind of I did do a few more dives and got it out. And then we got the life story of Mehmet, and he had a picture behind the curtain, over the curtain, he said, this is my son. And then he, he kind of started filling up and started kind of crying a bit. And it turns out his son was killed in a, in a motorbike accident like mm -hmm. years ago, and now he lives by himself. Uh, yeah, it was a wow. interesting sort of afternoon. <laughs> yeah. And the whiskey helped you find that? It did, yes, it kind of relaxes. I think it's like, I think if I'm ever going to free dive, you know, people get into yoga and meditation. I think I found a new method. I think it's just like you're down about three or four whiskeys. Brilliant. So, do we need to stock up on whiskey now? Yeah, I think okay. so. Because it'll help with uh, okay, honey. doing prop wraps. So, we met a few other people at Anchor, like Tim, Sherry, and Fallon, um, and we explored Bodrum Castle with them. So, we've come for a day visit to Bodrum Castle, which is uh, just the other side of the anchorage. We're actually in the shadow of Bodrum Castle where we're anchored at the moment. Um, but they're doing a lot of excavation at the moment and a lot of refurbishment, which means half of the castle is closed, which is a shame. Um, but it's still, it's beautiful and it's got a fantastic view of the bay over there. I like this place because it's nice for a change to go to a castle that isn't in pieces. 
We then took another inland trip to Ephesus, which is one of the best preserved Roman cities in the Mediterranean. So we're really racking up the UNESCO World Heritage Sites on this uh, journey. Today we're getting the bus to Selkirk or Selchuk, which is just before Izmir. We're actually going to visit some new friends in Izmir, but on the way we're stopping at Ephesus. So yeah, this is our second trip inland and um, yeah, we're quite excited. Ten to one, two. Ten? Yeah. Okay. Let's go and miss the bus. I don't know, maybe like about five. That's a normal bus. Okay. Or maybe six. I mean? Six, because you've got a chain. So here we are at Ephesus. Take this, 72 lira for everyone except Ewan who's free because he's seven. Right, in we go. Right now we're just w walking up this old Roman road. Um, it's amazing, like over sort of 250,000 people lived in this city. And it's really weird to think that they all walked along this road as well. It's really intact. It's quite amazing. So this is the Ephesus Terrace Houses, but um, you have to get another ticket, 36 lira. So that's kind of a bit of a shame, really. So you can't go in and see that. You'd think it'd be part of the um, site. I think the library was pretty impressive, but the rest of it was literally just ruined, and I was way too hot. The ruins! Boring. Library! Fascinating! The public toilets have no cubicles or nothing like that. There's about 12 toilets all literally lined up. Who likes the idea of sitting there with everyone else having, having their number twos? 250,000 people used these toilets while they were still um, available for the public. Wow. This, I think it's the fact that it's still got this main street going through it. You can imagine all the other stuff on either side. There's a lot of it still intact and they've excavated it quite well. So I think, yeah, that's the main thing for me, how they've built this kind of city along this valley and you can kind of follow your way along and um, get a real feel of it. These are um, columns made of andesite to hold up houses and temples. So these are the guys hard at work digging and excavating, I guess. This is the amphitheatre in Ephesus and it's quite big, I think 25,000 people can sit here. So there's the road to the original harbour. We've been lucky up to now, we've been in Turkey and we've been to a few places and it's been almost had the place to ourselves in some of the places, uh, particularly in eastern Turkey. But here it's such a honeypot attraction, there's just so many tourists. But, you know, at least it brings money in and uh, you do get a feeling of scale of what a Roman city used to be like. Is that what you want for Christmas? <laughs> I don't think I'll wait that long. We had to go for a fight to get it. What? <laughs> so next it was off to visit some friends we'd met online who said um, if you're ever visiting Turkey please look us up and come and stay with us. So we did.
we got what we thought was the um, airport bus and we're right on the side of the motorway with some chickens and there is no airport in sight so now we're having to walk along the side of the motorway to try and find this airport We've uh, come up to Izmir and we're going to try a traditional breakfast called a Cavalti and we were hoping to bring the boat up here but we're actually not going to get this far north so we've taken a bus to come and see some friends and now we are heading off to do some kite surfing. Arenka and me had always wanted to try kite surfing so while the kids were taken off to enjoy a genuine Roman bath we tried a, a kite surfer tasting session. I'm actually quite nervous. Why? I don't know, just it's like starting a new sport from scratch. And he's going to be teaching us. Hey! <laughs> There wasn't enough wind to actually do any sort of proper kite surfing, um, but we learned to control the kite. I'm not sure about that, but the first go, I don't know if we got a video but I got dragged across, but after that I think we got kind of it. He's about being chilled out really, and just letting it go. So this is the Arcas building and we came to see an exhibition on post-impressionism art. It's really, really good. We have been trying to run an art exhibition. We have been trying to run an art exhibition. Um, all of these are very, very sweet. Especially that one. That is weird. So while the girls went off to do more culture stuff, us boys went off for a weekend sail and enjoyed ourselves at anchor. So thanks to Matt, Emma, Luke and Martha for becoming such good friends and showing us such a good time. A fantastic time on board, haven't we? Yeah, I really it. Brilliant, yeah. So then it was just a matter of waiting for a weather window to leave Turkey and try and get some sleep in Bodrum Bay. sound of the call to prayer. I don't know why I like it. I think it's because like Woody reckons it's because it's the east. So it's uh, 20 past three in the morning and we just had a tripper boat go by uh, which woke me up because uh, the weight really slammed the boat and I uh, came out to check the dinghy. We've also got several discos going on in the background and it's really loud. I just don't know how the kids are sleeping through it. Um, but we'll leave in a few days, so hopefully we'll get some sleep then. Days we're gonna we're spending all of our Turkish lira. So How we've much? just been shopping at the supermarkets here, and the market is brilliant. So we really like the market. Um, it's got really nice fresh fruit, vegetables. They're really good, much better than the supermarket. We're trying to head to Greece in the next few days, so we had to do like a bigger shop really. So we've got a whole trolley full of stuff, and um, and we've got our rucksacks full of fruit and vegetables. 
Greece. So yeah, because in the islands in Greece, we don't really know what supermarkets there will be and how good it will be. So I had to stock up here. Last shop, um, we're just waiting for a bit of rigging to turn up um, and then we're going to head across to Kos. Oh my god! A few weeks ago we had the new rigging put in place um, and now we thought that was it, that's great for another 20 years. And then as we came into Bodrum, we put the anchor down and the anchor was down for four days and so we thought it was pretty much set. And then we got this kind of like weird wind that came in and whipped us round and tripped the anchor. And we dragged onto the bowsprit of a, one of the gullets round here. And even though we managed to kind of fend off, it did actually twang the cap shroud of the mizzen and snap one of the threads. And so now we're having to take off the cap shroud and then replace it. We had a new cap shroud sent by Emic Marine and they were really good, they, they sent it quite quickly. But as we're leaving in, well, imminently, um, we haven't got time to get the riggers in to do it, so we're kind of having to do it ourselves. We're going to drop the main so we can use the halyard to go up. Um, I'm going to use the balloon halyard as a safety rope and the topping lift we're going to use that to secure the mast while we go up. Typical, so we got the sail down and second time now we lost the halyard again. So Arenka being slightly lighter than me, uh, went up the mast via a purser knot and re-threaded the halyard. Because we haven't got a spare halyard, it's one of those things that's don't try at home, that's the kind of thing we're doing. Thing is, we need to get our new cap shroud on. Okay, this is the cap shroud. And to take we don't want to take off that broken catch round until we tension the mast that way. So the way we decide to do it is by, oh my God, I need to hold onto this. And so we're going to get this topping lift off so we can use it to tension the mast, but I'm going to hold the ladder now. So we managed to get the topping lift off the boom. And now we're using this to provide tension on the mast so that we can get that cap shroud off. This is the new cap shroud that needs to go on. It's a bit tense because the cap shroud is not tense anymore and we're worried about that spreader just collapsing. Then I followed by going up and replacing the cap shroud. It's a bit rolly out here, it doesn't help. It was all a bit fiddly, but we got there in the end. And now we need to reinstate the halyard and the topping lift on the mizzen boom, and then get the sail back up because there's a Mel Temi forecast for this evening. And so we want to kind of check our anchor as well, make sure everything's all right. So now it's a matter of get the topping lift on, get the halyard back on, get the sail lifted up, get it filled away before the wind comes. So after the chaos of the last Meltemi, we were obviously a bit concerned when the next one started blowing through. One of the famous Meltemis is blowing through. So uh, everybody's kind of coming Bodrum Bay to shelter from it. And it's causing a bit of mayhem because there are anchors dragging. There's a, there's a boat over there, Gullard, being towed by the Coast Guard. I think they've lost their anchor. And there's a weird looking catamaran that keeps dropping its anchor and dragging over other people's anchors. So it's all a bit, um, a bit fraught in here at the moment. And there's boats moving around all over the place. It's almost like a game of chess. You know, people are dragging and then moving. Um, there's another gullet here that's coming back after it anchored over there. But yeah, we, uh, we're kind of anxious to leave, really. Um... What's happened, Ewan? That's numbers broken. Numbers just snapped, or one of them has anyway. It's a good job we put a few on. Um, but that's why it's on in a few hours, it's just gone straight through that, so uh, we're just going to add another one. Yeah, yeah definitely. Hi Joe! Hi. 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 Have a good time, yeah? So once that had blown through, it was time to say goodbye to our old new friends and try and check out.
just managed to squeeze in and check out of Turkey before they go off on lunch break. A lot of people have not paid anything to check out and some people do. I don't think Bodrum's the best place. They're quite hot on um, getting agents fees to check out and paying fees. Yeah, so we're about to leave Turkey. A couple of hours to Greece. We've done customs, we've done Coast Guard and this is the last bit now, I think. Everyone, you have coming to Turkey one year is leave it, okay? You can't check out in advance, you have to check out on the day you're leaving Turkish waters, which is a, a bit of a pain. So we had to come in in the morning and then suddenly we found out they have a lunch break sort of halfway through the day, typical Mediterranean style. So then all of a sudden it was a mad rush. So in the pilot guide it says uh, it's about 100, up to 100 euros, um, but uh, when Arenka sort of uh, employed her negotiating skills, it went down to 50 and then 35. So we're actually checking out for 35 euros now. Um, so we, we had the last couple of days in Bodrum, we had a look around, did the touristy thing, sort of had a, a nice coffee at the restaurant and the kebab and stuff, um, but now we're ready to leave. It's only a two hour crossing now to, to cause the, the Greek islands come right up to the coast of Turkey, so it's quite quick. Waving goodbye to Turkey, say goodbye boys. Bye. It's the last time we'll see Turkey in a while. So thanks to the patrons for your continuous support. We're always amazed and grateful at your generosity and welcome to the new ones as well. As you two have disabled comments on family blogs, please pop over to the Facebook page and leave any comments or messages on there. Or better still, pop over to our Patreon page and become part of our Patreon family. Thank you. And if you want to do it,